this week on Engage the Sage. Hi everyone, I'm Don Sauce here. Welcome to this week's episode of Engage the Sage. This week we're going to talk to you about lecturing into the void. What we mean by lecturing into the void is to create video content that your students are going to watch asynchronously. And what that means is they're going to watch it kind of at their convenience. And they're going to learn the information from you, it's just you're not going to be there in real time with them. Lecturing into the void or creating these videos for asynchronous viewing is awkward. Ask me how I know. While these are awkward though, they're very, very useful. The ability to create information for your students to watch at their convenience gets us through a lot of barriers to education. There might be barriers where your students can't be in your class in any given time. There might be a situation in which you want to get them information but didn't have the class time to provide it. There might be a situation in which you're just teaching an online class. So all of these barriers can be at least somewhat circumvented by creating these videos for your students to watch on their own. So ideally, you're going to lecture into the void well. So what we have for you today are five tips to help you create better asynchronous video content. Our first tip for lecturing into the void is to keep it short. Streamline your information to get at the most essential information, take out all the trivia and all the fluff. I highly recommend rather than creating one long lecture video, for instance, is to create smaller modules of your lecture content for that week. Think about what you can do in five to 10 minutes and then create a series of those. One of the things I want you to keep in mind is that this asynchronous lecture video content is going to be hard on your students to keep up with. It's also not necessarily going to be easy for you to create. If you're creating short videos, it's easier for them to find the time and the motivation to watch. It's also easier for you to find the time, the motivation, and the energy to record. When you're shooting for these shorter ones, it's also going to create some motivation for you to tell the most succinct and compelling story with the most perfect examples that you can create. In summary, shorter is going to be more engaging. My second tip for lecturing into the void is to not worry too much about the production value. If you've seen before, we have some videos about the kind of behind the scenes about Engage the Sage, we'll link it for you here. We don't have a high production value setup. We don't do things that are really all too fancy. And that's because to convey information to your audience, you really don't have to. If you misspeak, if you say the wrong thing, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop that video and start over. Your students are going to appreciate, much like they would in a face-to-face -face class with you, that sometimes you say the wrong thing, sometimes you slip up, and that's going to make you more human and more authentic, which is the centerpiece of peace. The third tip I have for Lecture Into the Void, and I really like this one, is to ask yourself and answer your own questions during the recording. When I teach my face-to-face -face classes, I spend a lot of time asking my students questions. I think this is a very powerful teaching technique. It's a wonderful way for me to get a check on their learning. And I think it's fun. And I think what we can do is we can carry those asking of the questions into the asynchronous video recordings as well. Much like these are valuable in class, these are valuable when you're lecturing into the void for a few reasons. I think doing this, asking these questions and then answering them yourselves, maybe pausing first, is it lets your students know what they should be learning to that point. So it provides an opportunity for your students to stay engaged and to critically think about the information and to test their own learning. I will even encourage my students sometimes to hit pause before continuing when I ask them a question to see if they really understand the material before they progress. Asking yourself a question and then answering it provides a highlight, kind of a pause point in that recording so that your students know this was important. This was interesting. It also provides an opportunity for you to show your students that you care about their education and that they are learning even when you're not there with them in real time. Asking these questions help me highlight for my students things that might be easily confused. A lot of times I'll stop to ask myself a question when I know that I was confusing. So what it'll do is it'll provide me with an opportunity to clarify a point that I could have made better in the first place. I also think this is fun. I think it's fun to have a conversation with myself about this cool content in front of my students. And if we can't geek out about stuff in our classes, I don't know when we can. The fourth recommendation that I make when you're creating asynchronous videos for your students to watch is to smile. And I don't necessarily even smile for my students, although that's part of it, is I smile for me. When I smile, I feel more engaged. I feel more invested in the information. So even if they can't see me smile, I think it makes me more engaging when I'm lecturing to them into the void. 
I think smiling is one way we can create connection. There are other ways to create connection too, but it's one that I've enjoyed in trying to create connection with my students, even when we're not together in real time. My fifth tip when you're lecturing into the void is to engage in the experience and to show your students that you are engaged in this experience. One of the things we never want to convey to our students is that when we're teaching them, we would rather be somewhere else. So if the awkwardness of that experience, if the discomfort of that experience of just talking to a camera is something that your students are gonna pick up on, it may make them less likely to be able to learn well from you. The entire foundation of our Engage the Sage premise is that the engagement of the instructor trickles down to the engagement of the students and it promotes their learning and their success. So anything you can do to show that you are engaged in that material, I think is going to help your students learn. Tell your students that you enjoy the information. Have fun with the information. Come up with great examples. Maybe use the smile to convey engagement, but find ways to show your students that you value, find important, and are enjoying the experience of lecturing to them, even when you're not there together. I think one of the best ways to engage in creating these asynchronous videos for your students to watch in their convenience is to have fun with them. You've heard me say this a couple times today, but this is kind of the take home point. Have fun with these. When you have fun with these, your students are gonna engage in them more. They're gonna be more likely to watch them in the first place and they're gonna learn better. I have one final bonus tip for creating asynchronous video content. And that is to begin with a welcoming statement and to end with a closing statement. So when you start out, welcome your students, let them know what you're gonna be really excited to teach them today. And when you're done, provide a summary statement and thank them for their engagement. One of my pet peeves is seeing people just say, and that's all we got. Excite them about it and say, I'm really excited to have learned this with you today. So we've just given you five tips for when you're lecturing in the void to create better asynchronous video content for your students to watch at their own convenience. In the comments below, I would love to see tips that you have for us in lecturing into the void, maintaining that engagement and teaching our students well across all modalities. Thank you for joining us this week on Engage the Sage. Please like, subscribe, sign up for notifications, and share us on social media. We will see you next time on Engage the Sage.